Welcome to Gear Check Games. This is part 22 of our commentary for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Last time we solved the mystery of the Glitz Pit, defeated Macho Grubba, and got ourselves the third crystal star, the gold star, I believe. And today we're going to go back to the Thousand Year Door and put the thing in the thing and find out where the next thing is. And once again, that terrifying, terrifying chapter in music was playing. <laughs> mm hmm. I don't get that, Nick. I, I honest, I don't know. I'm charmed I, by it. I like. Again, this was the era when references to the old Mario games were like novel and cute. We all watched Killer Clowns from Outer Space like a couple nights ago. You know mm -hmm. how yeah, terrifying and it wasn't carnival scary music all. is. It was funny. <laughs> it was. It was hilarious. It was funny. It's a very funny movie. <laughs> yes, I highly. Re if you if you want some good schlocky fun with your friends on a. On a Friday night, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. You can't go wrong. It's free with ads on YouTube. Yeah, shockingly. You know what yeah. else is free on YouTube? Uh, and we should probably talk about the game, but before we do, uh, Star War The Third Gathers uh, Backstroke <laughs> of the West. Yeah, this is basically just the part of the episode that might as well be update on what we did in the last <laughs> week. Mm -hmm. We had <laughs> a bad movie watching night. Star War The Third Gathers The Backstroke of the West. Just look it up. But you know the best thing that's free on YouTube? Gear Check Games plays pa yeah! Paper Mario, a thousand year door. Watch <laughs> that. Wait a yeah, second. Not a whole lot to say initially here, just kind of cleaning up some scraps. I actually could have done this before going to chapter three, but it was kind of out of the way, and I was going to go here later anyway, so. It's just, uh. Um, what the heck? It's just collectibles, right? Yeah, just a star piece back there, but um, there's actually something a little more significant to the right here. Ooh. Loading screen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, this is this actually pillar. an underground uh, section of the town. This, to my understanding, is what remains of the original uh, city of Rogueport. Ooh. Or Okay, it wasn't called Rogueport originally, but the city whose ruins... Rogueport is built upon. Ooh. It's the ruins of old New York. Yeah. So wait. Did you ever see that terrible uh, American Tale direct video sequel? They made that wasn't that bad. A shanty town on top of like the Roman Coliseum. And I, and I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about Five Goes West. Oh okay. Yeah. No, the other one was bad. Five Goes West is pretty good. <laughs> there was another one. Like. Hey, you know about stylish moves? Like halfway into the game? Let me teach you about game. stylish moves. <laughs> Imagine getting to this point and be like, wait a minute, you can push A? <laughs> so, um, I'm not going to lie, that might have been me. I don't remember I, uh, exactly. I know it's like a, a faux pas to talk about other series uh, uh, in your own series, uh, but the Grumps went through... Faux pas, I mean a, a staple, because that's true. <laughs> But the Grumps went through literally this entire game without knowing about stylish moves, so... That's true. I'm guessing they had a much rougher time of it. Yeah. Hey, look, it's Bombette. Oh, well, it's a pink bomb. The bomb. Right, horse tails. Aren't uh, stylish moves more for, like, a late game and, like, second playthrough thing anyway? I mean, they help mm. you a lot. Like no, they're the yeah, they're game. very helpful. I mean, the more stylish moves you do, the faster you can use another special. Yeah, and the less you have to like appeal. Mm, that's true. So this guy here that we just talked to, Wonky, uh, he's basically kind of like an in-game resource of information. Mm. I think he explains some of the more like esoteric things that like it wouldn't really be convenient for the game to give you a force tutorial for. I cannot tell like, like if he's supposed move. to... No, that was, uh, that was Bandy Andy Tandy. Um, I always I... check back there, too, because it looks like there'd be a star piece there. Yeah, I know. Like, why put that rubble there? I cannot There is tell. something you can get there, but not until if, after uh, chapter gold six. Gold bars! If that man that we were just speaking to is supposed to look like an old man or a drunkard or both. He's just wonky. I actually yeah. forgot you could buy Ultra Shrooms and Jam and Jellies here. Yeah. Only in this Mart, I think. Yeah. Because in the first game, there were, there were only, like, a set number of them in the whole playthrough, unless you got oh. them randomly from the Little Oinks farm. See, I didn't Same with that. Repel Gels. Wow. Repel Gel, that's a... Yeah, they, like, turned you invisible for a few turns. It's a very yeah. good name, though. Didn't they replace that with the repel cape? Probably. 
I imagine it's pro the repel cape is probably a lot weaker because, well, one, the repel gels were like really powerful in the original game. And, uh, like I said, there was a limited number of them. And I think you can just straight up buy repel capes in like one of the first stores in this one. Yeah. Now I left this in because I don't think we've fought these guys yet. These are, uh, Spanias. They're Spinias with spikes. Spanias. <laughs> And now that we have uh, the super hammer and super boots, they are completely trivial. And as such, barely give us any experience. So once again, I pose the question, those little niblets, spikes or arms? Or, I mean, teeth or arms? Um, legs. Legs? Teeth. That's an interesting take on it. Yeah, oh. maybe they're like Sebulba. <laughs> Oh, they just have little, uh... Yeah, just little coming off them legs. <laughs> yeah. What if jumping on these guys, like, just catapulted you out of the match? <laughs> just bow, straight up out of the, out of the fight. <laughs> just to troll you. <laughs> God. Yeah, they cheat you out of a grand total of one EXP. If this was Paper Mario 2, the Lost Levels, then yeah, that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> No, if this was Paper Mario 2, the lost levels, there'd also be annoying wind everywhere. <laughs> Actually, I just remembered what the next secret is hidden behind. <laughs> this guy. Oh yeah, this is random. I got a random uh, power smash, smash badge for defeating that enemy. That barely ever happens. Oh yeah, enemies can sometimes have badges. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's something I kind of forgot about because I don't often encounter it. You I wonder missed. if you could make it through this entire game never updating your BP. I mean, you can. I'm pretty sure... It's not that um, hard of a game. <laughs> like, early on when I would play this game, I didn't prioritize BP a whole lot, so... Um, like, I relied more on, like, just the generic partner <laughs> moves. Um, yeah, it's back. And I'm actually present to listen to my own meme this time, so yeah. happy to see that. Don't say that to you loud, the ISP enforcement McGrady will hear you. Oh yeah, they're always watching. <laughs> always listening. Always watching. Always watching. <laughs> oh, hey. Vincent, I thought his name was Yoshi. It's the pit of a hundred trails. No, Trey, mm. don't you remember? Our dear friend is named Vincent. Oh, how could I forget? <laughs> Trey's just already so done. <laughs> you know what they should add to the next Phoenix Wright game? Pit of a hundred trials. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you gotta wow. blitz a hundred trials in a row. <laughs> uh, They're all ones that you've never seen. It is, it's not that hard, but can you put in enough time to get to the end? <laughs> They're all like Winston Payne trials where it's just like super easy and the enemy prosecutor is not good at all. You, get, you gotta get a, a hundred people declared innocent, but they all come so quickly that you can't really be sure all of them really are innocent. <laughs> oh, you mean like being a public defender? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you just kind of have to do it because that's your job. Hey man, public defenders pay the bills. Boy, that creeple sh that creeple. <laughs> that creep- <laughs> That's Third time's a charm. Mm -hmm. That steeple sure looks creepy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a creeple sure looks creeple. <laughs> We all, I think we all three went with different combinations of creepy and steepy. Yeah. It's the creepy steepy. It's That's the, why it's the best. It's, it's the most versatile for low, low effort humor. It's the crump stump. <laughs> no, the crump stump was in chapter two. Mm, that's right. Damn, that would have been a good title part. Oops. Retroactively change it. We can do yeah. it. You do have the power. God, this... So it's already out there, guys. It's too late. Where and also, so in the last part, we remarked on how silly it is that they were all shocked. That, that, that Princess Peach was shocked that the ex knots are trying to take over the world. Frankly, is also shocked. Like, why? <laughs> They're bad guys. Like, of course, that's what they want. Yeah, you live in the Mushroom Kingdom. Have you not experienced enough, like, it's like the, world domination plots? Yeah, it's like the most rote thing about them. Like, of course <laughs> they want to take over the world. <laughs> but I digress. Um, to, on a more positive note, I do... One thing I do like about this scene, and just about these Frankly scenes in general, um, is that... 
he's not just telling you like, oh, here's the next thing. He's also updating you on his research and like you're slowly as you progress through the game piecing together like the nature of what is behind the thousand year door. And it's always kind of like updating and changing a little bit. He also uh, keeps you abreast of his personal uh, life. I met a lovely girl named Dorothy. Oh, she's wonderful. <laughs> what if you opened the thousand year door and behind it was the real Professor Frankly? <laughs> Surprise! When you open the thousand year door, it's just Mickey and Riku. Macho, <laughs> yeah, Ew. it's the door to no, darkness. No, without a doubt. Wait, hold on. So, no spoilers for the end of this game, but uh, it's quite the opposite of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Uh. Man, what was I gonna say? Yeah, it's quite the opposite of Kingdom Hearts because this game actually has a good ending. <laughs> oh, I like the Kingdom Hearts ending. Yeah, the Kingdom Hearts one. I guess, specific was fine. I guess specifically ragging on Kingdom Hearts three, and by that I mean oh. I have no idea what the ending is. I'm only going off of what Trey's told me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anywho, um, what I was gonna say oh, is yeah, I think. Guy. Yeah. So okay, I'll put a pin in that. This guy, I'll yeah, he'll tell coins, you. Thank um, you lore about uh, the the history of Rogue Port beyond like what you see in the opening. Uh, he goes into a little bit more detail, specifically about these four heroes. And uh, I'm not going to listen to all of his stories, but I would advise you to do so if you're curious about the, uh, the origin of the black treasure chests that curse you. Are the four heroes Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Bowser? Uh, you forgot Mallow. And that See, I was making a super pig Mario reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different, uh, different eras, I guess. But um, what I'm I was so going to say earlier Mallow, about not Gino. Nobody Gino's wants like me to make this favorite. point. No, ma um, make your point first. <laughs> one of the things I like about on, the Thousand Year point. Door. Come on, that, <laughs> um, Dan. Right, I'll, stop. I'll stop bugging you now. <laughs> Mm, yes, <laughs> let the power flow through me. Make thank work. you. <laughs> let him speak, damn. <laughs> go, Joe. I go. like that the story in Thousand Year Door is not just at the beginning. You're told you need to rescue the princess, and then at the end you rescue the princess. Like you have a goal in the beginning, but like by the end of the game, your reasons for pursuing that goal have changed, like, because of new information you've acquired. Yeah. Like, yeah. it feels like the story is evolving mm. as you go through it, instead of just, like, crossing things off of a checklist, like it often does in kind of collectathon yeah. type stories like this. I like that methodology of storytelling, which, um, like, I'm gonna talk about D&D &D for a minute, because mm -hmm. it's just a really good way to, like, relate what I'm talking about. Um, but, like, in D and D, you can have a character because, like, when you make your character in D and D, you have a goal for that character. Like, that's like a big part of your character is you have one, like, one or two driving forces that are the reason that they're adventuring. But like, by the end of the campaign, if it was a good campaign, you've probably like just completely forgotten what you were originally going to do. You've evolved so much beyond the point of your original goal that it's like you're playing a completely different character. Yeah. And, like, those are the campaigns that you'll remember. And those are the and stories that you'll remember. And if it's a bad campaign, you really are playing a totally different character. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh. your character got got obliterated by an overpowered enemy. <laughs> uh, Yoshi seems a little trepidatious about entering this <laughs> alley. He's... And then he just hops over the entire wall. <laughs> also, we kind of glossed over it a minute ago. Joe, do you not like Gino? Oh, yeah. No, I, I... You know what? To be honest, I was just kind of making fun. I know <laughs> almost nothing about Gino. You heard it here, he's heavily folks. Requested Joe hates Gino. <laughs> <sighs> Sharpen your pitchforks. You got me. <laughs> you know, I've not played Super Mario RPG to the point where you recruit Gino, so I don't know, really know much about him, but, I mean... It's got a cool design. He's a stum. I plan to play that game one day, so. That is a really weird way of writing Perfecta Mundo, because I read it as perfect a mundo, like a perfect world. Um, 
perfect a mundo. Yeah. Perf perfect the world. world. Yeah. Like, you could have just used an O, Perfecto Mundo, and it would have. You would have just read it. It's not possible. <laughs> but yeah, um. Not a whole lot of lead up to this next chapter. You just kinda. You go in the pipe, you get kicked, and then you gotta have a guy write your name on your butt. <laughs> Wait. Which allows you to go through the pipe. <laughs> Wait, we it didn't let us through the pipe last time? Oh. Yeah. That's, that is what happened. Oh. <laughs> The Twilight Town pipe is picky, but don't worry, that is, a, that is a thing of the past, and we shall see you on the other side of this pipe yeah. in part 23. Bye.